Hello, welcome back to Job Order Costing. We will review quickly and then solve some problems. This slide is just to confirm that you know where job order and process costing uses are most appropriate. The first question gives you four choices regarding job costing and wants you to pick what fits best. A is wrong because job costing can easily be used in non-manufacturing settings, for example, in a doctor's office or in a consultant's office. B is correct because job costing is main feature. Job costing's main feature is to record the flow of cost for each job or customer. C and D both refer to process costing, so our correct answer is B. The second problem wants you to pick the most likely candidate for process costing. A is a mass production option of identical goods. All other are examples of job costing. So the correct answer is A. Let us go through the steps needed to arrive at the product cost of a job under job costing system. First, decide the job for which cost is to be calculated. Second, pull together all indirect costs for the job typically material and labor. Now, we will need to deal with indirect manufacturing costs. First, select the cost allocation base on which indirect costs will be assigned to cost object. Typically, cost allocation base is given in the question. Now use the budgeted manufacturing overhead rate formula. In some problems, you might be asked to Use actual numbers instead of budgeted numbers to calculate the rate. Pay attention to the company's policy given in the question. Next, apply the calculated rate times actual activity in the allocation base to get to applied overhead. Now, you have all the three manufacturing costs to put together total cost of a job. Finally, you should have direct material, direct labor, and applied manufacturing overhead as the total cost accumulated for your cost project. Let us practice the steps in job costing with an example. We are given material, labor, number of units made, and budgeted manufacturing overhead rate. All we need to do is to put together the three manufacturing costs of material, labor, and manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing, excuse me, Material and labor are easy. Manufacturing overhead is to be allocated on the basis of labor hours and we are given the rate already. So, we multiply this rate by actual direct labor hours consumed by the job, which is our cost object, and we will be done. Be careful about what the question is asking. It asked for per unit cost, not total cost of the job. So, in the last step, we divide total cost by number of units to get per unit cost. Let us try a two department problem. We, were, we are given two cost drivers here, labor hours and man machine hours, and the estimated manufacturing overhead cost for each department. In part A, you have to calculate a budgeted manufacturing overhead rate using direct labor hours as the allocation base. So we total up the manufacturing overhead costs of the two departments and we divide it by the correct allocation base, which will give us the rates. In one, it would be divided by direct labor cost, and in the second, it would be divided by machine hours. Here are two more problems that start fairly easy. In the first one, we have to figure out the cost of goods completed. Picture the work in process account in your mind and think about what is on the debit side and what is on the credit side. You have beginning inventory and total manufacturing costs on debit, and ending inventory and cost of goods completed and transferred out to the finished goods on credit. Now you can figure this problem out by adding everything on the debit side and subtracting ending inventory to get cost of goods manufactured. Next one is also a simple question on applied overhead. The actual overhead is 1.11 and you are given two numbers to figure out what the applied overhead would be. Multiply budgeted manufacturing overhead rate with the actual number of hours. Since applied is lesser than actual, the difference will be under applied by 110,000. 
Can you see that? Let us see one more to be doubly confident on this material. In part A, you have to figure out the denominator used in calculating the budgeted manufacturing overhead rate. As a first step, write down the definition of budgeted manufacturing overhead rate. Plug in the rate and solve for machine hours. Are you with me? In the next step, we have to apply the manufacturing overhead given the rate and actual machine hours. So, we take the rate from the question and we apply it to the actual machine hours given to us in the question and we are home. Finally, we are asked to figure out the difference between actual and applied overhead so that we can calculate under or over applied. Please don't subtract and sign the overhead blindly. If applied is more than actual, it is over applied. Otherwise, it is under applied. Clear? In this problem, you are given a work in process inventory account. The question wants you to find out the budgeted manufacturing overhead rate one more time. Again, start with what is the total amount of applied manufacturing overhead. It would be the difference between ending balance of work in process account and total of direct material and direct labor. Next, total the direct labor costs and since they are used as the allocation base, write down the definition of applied overhead. It would be budgeted manufacturing overhead rate times actual direct labor costs. So, 1500 which is given to you is equal to budgeted manufacturing overhead rate times direct labor costs which would be which would mean that the budgeted overhead rate must be 